In this video, we will be looking at the text editor Visual Studio Code, which is an incredible program. Uh, and we're going to download, install, and, and I'll show you a couple of things that you can do with it. So uh, go to your browser and just say download Visual Studio Code. This is different than Visual Studio, if you're curious. But it's made by the same folks. <laughs> All right, so whichever operating system you have, uh, just go ahead and click on that download uh, button there, and then just go through the install process. Just all the default things that it, that it has set up there in the install process are just fine if you want to leave those the way that they are. And then once you open up the program, it'll look something like this. It might not look exact. It probably won't look exactly the same. I changed my preferences here. The in the color theme, you'll probably see something like this like a dark blue. Um, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead. So there's a couple of a couple of different things that I that I want to show you. Okay. So first of all, whatever class you're going to be using Visual Studio Code for, um, in your files, have a folder for that class or a folder for those programs, and then open up a folder in Visual Studio Code where you're going to house all of your programs. Okay, so just now I did that by saying file, open folder, and then I have a folder for all of my CIT 160 programs. Okay, and then I can just come over here, um, you know, and, and I can see all these programs and it's really easy to kind of, to navigate all these different files. Okay, so that's really helpful. All right, um, anytime you're using something like Git, uh, Visual Studio Code uh, has a lot of different things that can integrate Git really well. You can see this says uh, M right here, it just means that that was modified. Um, it says I modified it a few a few seconds ago. I have uncommitted changes, so that's really nice that that shows up there. Um, but there's a bunch of different extensions that you guys can get. So whether you're wanting to use this for a C++ class, a Python class, HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, you know any of that, there are lots of extensions that that you can download for Visual Studio Code. So in your sidebar, your sidebar won't look like this. It'll probably have I think four things in here. Um, but if you hover over one of them, it'll say extensions. It might have a different icon than this. Um, but there are a bunch of different things that you can install that, that will help you. Um, right here, it shows all of the ones that I have enabled in mine. Um, you know, I have Git Link, uh, Heroku CLI, which is for CS313, um, uh, a JavaScript one, a live server one, which is pretty cool. You know, I could right click on this and say, um, open with live server and then it just opened up this window you know and then if I change this here let's say I'll say my second template program and save it I just come back here um, and it automatically refreshed it without me having to do anything okay so simple things like that um, I will include in the link uh, a bunch of these different links uh, of ones that I found were very helpful um, for, for different classes, depending on what you're doing, you know, if you have a Python class, you might want to get one for Python. But if I just searched in here, like, let's say I was searching for Python, you can see there's a lot of different extensions that you can install. And all of them, if you click on one of them, will have a rating and how many people have downloaded it. Okay, this is this one's huge. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen one with 57 million downloads and it has incredible ratings. Okay, so you might see this and be like, yeah, you know, that might be something that I want. Uh, linting will like check for errors in your code before you actually run it. Debugging will let you walk through, step through your code um, to, to find errors in it. IntelliSense, while you're typing, it will actually kind of um, like kind of predict or show you different options um, to complete what you're typing. Uh, code formatting, refactoring, unit test snippets, and more. You know, and there's and there's extensions similar to this for pretty much every programming language. They might not have 57 million downloads, but that's just because Python's awesome. All right, so let's look at a couple here. Um, if I open up this guy over here. All right, so link to install Visual Studio Code, how to install extensions if you need um, instructions on how to install extensions they're right here but it's pretty easy you know we just saw a bunch of extensions you just hit the install button um, and then there's a bunch you know for a CIT 160 or for a web class like 230 or something like that I would download this web dev essentials pack okay which is where most of my extensions came from okay um, and then they also have a tutorial on this pack as well 
uh, CS124 uh, had to download Code Runner to be able to execute my code here uh, in this terminal. And if you want to execute C++ code in here, you'll also have to download a C++ compiler. Okay. Um, but then I also had uh, this there, and then here's links for for the compiler. Um, and then CS313, like I said, I had Heroku CLI, and then a PHP IntelliFence is what it's called. Um, and then Python had a couple, and then others, just a couple of other random things that I have. Um, but this is a list of the ones that I have installed, but depending on what classes you have, you know, if you're going to take a Java class, you might want to, um, you know, Google search a Java, like good Java extensions uh, that you can use in, in Visual Studio Code. Okay. Uh, another thing that I wanted to look at real quick is a couple of hotkeys that are extremely helpful in Visual Studio Code. Okay. Let's say I wanted to change the name of this function. I could select it and hit Control D to highlight the next instance of that string that I had selected. And so I could say my new function and it would change the name of both spots. Okay. Which is pretty nice. Um, same thing with this. If I wanted to change this ID, I could just hit Control D, select the next one. Or let's say I wanted to type here and down here for whatever reason, I could hold Control click again, or maybe it's alt. There, alt. I can hold alt, click again, and I can type in both spots. All right, um, let's say I wanted to type on each one of these lines. I could hit uh, control alt I or shift alt I, and it made a cursor on each one of these lines. And I could hit home to go to the beginning of it and say, um, you know, whatever. But that one's really nice too. In addition to that, I can also click here and hit shift alt and that will just copy that line of code. But if I hit Control Alt and hit my down arrow or my up arrow, then it'll just expand the cursor to those adjacent lines above or below it. And then you can type on those as well. Um, there's, there's a million different hotkeys that you guys can use that are extremely helpful. If you look in Preferences uh, and click on Keyboard Shortcuts, you guys can actually adjust these and change them to anything that you want. And you can see from extensions that I installed, it also kind of brought in its own little set of, of, of hotkeys. We can see add cursor above, control alt up arrow. I just showed you guys that one. Uh, add cursor to end lines, shift alt I, I just showed you guys that one. Add line comment, um, you know, so, so I would look through these. These are really nice. Um, a lot of different things that can really, you know, be helpful. So. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to show you guys. Um, Git is really helpful in here. Uh, I have both of these folders connected to Git repositories. So I could come into here um, and say Git status. And, you know, I could see, oh, I modified my template.html, you know, and I can use um, this terminal for that. Uh, if you're seeing this right here, you, you can see I have this class workspace right here. I have CS313, CIT160. CS124 and some Python stuff that I have. And what you can do with that is you can say add folder to workspace. It'll just pop open an explorer window and I could add a folder to my workspace. And it would show up down here with these other folders. Um, and then I could say uh, save workspace. If I had made a change, I could right click on this. Um, let's see, right here, save workspace as, um, and that would save a workspace file that I could actually open. So if I click on open workspace, I don't have very many, I have one, okay, uh, that, that I just recently made. Um, but this is a workspace file that I could open with Visual Studio Code that would have all of these things saved and ready to rock, okay? Um, so anyways, that's really nice too. If you have like multiple classes, you could open up another window. So I could say new window um, and then in here, I could open up its own folder or whatever I wanted to do here. But as soon as I close Visual Studio Code, it will only open up one window. It won't open up both, okay? Which is why I went this route. I had a workspace. I'm like, yeah, I'll just add like multiple directories here, even though they're like completely independent of one another. You know, they're not like the same project, which would be typical for a workspace. Um, but where I can't have like multiple, op multiple windows opening at the same time, um, I just put them all in the same workspace, okay? Um, so yeah, a, a bunch of different stuff that you guys can do. Uh, you'll see here, these colors look a lot like Sublime's colors. I love the Sublime text editor. And um, so I had these match my Sublime text editor colors. And that's why I have this uh, theme, because when you change the theme, it also changes all the colors of, of, of your code. Okay, uh, let's see if there's anything else. So right here is just like a quick reference for, for Git stuff. 
if you ever want to debug stuff, um, you know, I can also come into here, let's see, 124 programs. If I clicked on this one, um, so this is just a simple hello world program in C++. I could actually run this, see that? Just by hitting this play button up here. And that's because I have the C++ um, source code compiler installed on my Windows machine. And I included that in my path variable, um, my environment path variable. And then I also had that C++ extension downloaded and installed here in Visual Studio Code. And so I could run that extremely easily here as well. Okay, um, so yeah, a, a bunch of different stuff that you could do. I, I would encourage you, like I said a second ago, to Google things, you know, regardless of what class you're doing this for. Um, but this is extremely helpful, and it's a program that you will likely use for many classes, and it's free. You know, you can use it to develop personal projects outside of class. You can use it in professional environments. Uh, a lot of larger companies will provide uh, expensive licensed software, such as Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code, uh, or IntelliJ, or you know PyCharm, different things like that, which are incredible programs. Okay, um, but as far as a free program goes, this one is extremely versatile, really easy to use. Um, it might be a little bit of a learning curve as far as like installing extension goes, extensions go, um, and and figuring out how to you know really streamline that efficiency that you can get to. Um, but it's pretty easy to just pick it up and start going. So. Uh, but anyways, I hope that this was helpful uh, as far as, you know, downloading, installing uh, Visual Studio Code and, and just a couple of tips to personalize it for you. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know, uh, but I'll look forward to talking with you guys soon.